Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of the Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of the Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of the Spark. Additional funding provided by Christian Brothers University, Power and Tell, and Baptist Memorial Healthcare. Get better with Baptist. This month on The Spark, our theme is supply. We'll learn more about a nonprofit bringing people together to build homes, communities, and hope. We'll explore an organization focused on recruiting, training, and supporting effective teachers in order to provide low-income Memphis neighborhoods with a high quality of education. And we'll discuss how a local family-owned office supply company is using its own resources to help nonprofits thrive. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're bringing people together to build homes, communities and hope. I'm here with the Executive Director for Habitat for Humanity of Greater Memphis, Dwayne Spencer. And when we say Habitat for Humanity, you guys are doing so much. People know you for the homes, but there's a lot more to it. So give us a little bit of the history though of the work here in Memphis. Yeah, we've been here since 1983. We've probably built about 440 houses in Memphis, Shelby County and Fayette County. And uh, over the last four years, we've begun to migrate um, into revitalization efforts. So we're not just building houses from the ground up, we're also doing uh, blight remediation and doing critical repairs, rehabbing houses and selling them, and sort of letting the community sort of um, help dictate um, our efforts based on their needs. Well, and that's where it's so much more than just the homes and even the renovation, this revitalization. It is. Um, it, it's, there's so many different layers to it, but for, let's start with the homes, because I think that's what a lot of people see is, sure. you, know, you see the teams going out there and building the yep. homes and giving the keys to the family, and it's an amazing experience, so touching, but there's it a is. lot more to it behind the scenes than just even right. the home itself. Yeah. Talk about leading up to it, all the nuances of the education and the training and working with the families. Right, so we really serve as the builder of the house, the mortgage company, and also the organization that's doing the financial counseling for the homeowner or for the, uh, to the soon to be homeowner. So that's what we call financial literacy. So we basically uh, take an applicant and basically pre-approve them. And then they go through anywhere from 15 to 20 weeks of financial literacy. It changes as we um, sort of just test the system and see what's working. And um, so anywhere from 15 to 20 weeks of financial literacy. They are learning uh, how to budget, how to manage or eliminate credit cards, manage right. debt, eliminate debt, um, banking accounts, checking accounts, savings, that sort of thing. And I mean, just thinking about that is so important because even if you get the home, there's still expenses and yes. you still have to manage all of these expenses and the budgets. Right. And so it's so monumentally important for that family. Well, the good thing is that, um, you know, our, our mortgage has no interest attached to it. So they are coming from a situation of usually a, some rental situation where that household expense is burdensome to them and to their budget. So they're gonna be buying a house at a lower price point, which is gonna help their financial situation and their budget situation going forward. But we work very uh, closely with them to put those budgets together early. We encourage them to save up the $1,000 down payment, which is, man which is a mandatory but then also another $1,000 that's basically an emergency fund. We, we've only been doing that for maybe the last three or four years. We realized that it was really important that we encourage that as well, like all of us need to have is that emergency fund. Have to have that slush fund over there. That's right. So, okay, so on that end, you're walking the, the applicant and the families through the process to get them prepared. 
But then on the other side, then you're pulling together many times corporate teams, volunteer teams, all the above to be able That's to right. actually physically construct the home. Exactly. So we've got our other, the other side of the office is out in the field uh, uh, selling the sponsorship packages to churches and corporations and colleges, uh, those folks who want to come out and physically help us construct the home. Because what's the cost of a home to put it together in terms well, of sponsorship? Well, the sponsorship is $70,000 for a full sponsorship. We obviously will do $5,000 packages sure. or 10000 We do all of those and put you know, multiple partners on one house in order to bring it together. Uh, on the back side, the physical cost is generally much more than that, sure. and the overhead, and it's sometimes difficult to cover it. But uh, the $70,000 is a sponsorship cost. But the neat thing is, obviously it's an amazing team building experience to go out there and physically build this house and to pass the keys over to be there for that is uh, absolutely touching. But it is. you don't really have to know a whole lot about construction. That's no. the point is that you have uh, experts out there guiding, but doing things that you can do and teaching them how to build these homes. That's right. So you, you, you're a novice volunteer. You come out to the build site, you don't have to have any skills. I'm the worst. Don't, don't, don't let me paint or hammer. They don't like me on the build site. But um, a novice volunteer can come out. We have experienced seasoned volunteers who are out there, you know, eight weeks um, in the spring, eight weeks in the fall, and they are you know, the ones who lead the novice volunteers and will advise you on putting up uh, uh, the uh, siding if you're doing siding or painting or nailing or hanging cabinets, whatever it is, they lead you through that. And we have a four-person construction department as well that's always on site. And to your point about putting the money in as the homeowner, that actually goes back into feeding your growth. And I know that a big part of that is you have the renovations and the revitalization effort, but you're also, too, you're literally building communities. So you actually have communities that you're building together. Talk about just some of those aspects. Well, when, you, when we say building communities together, what, what an example of that would be Uptown, the Uptown neighborhood. Uh, you know, years ago, we would just build a house uh, singularly on a lot, on an infill lot, anywhere we could get it, you know, do a donated lot. Today, we are uh, working in neighborhoods like Uptown where we are building a new house on a vacant lot and we are doing critical repairs to several houses on the same street. If possible, we will uh, do cleanups, um, blight remediation, and uh, we're working with uh, um, the uh, police department to address crime in neighborhoods. So it's um, a very holistic approach. It's, it's holistic, that, that's exactly right. So any of the, the tertiary issues that would negatively impact the street or the neighborhood, we're trying to address either on our own or with the, the specific agencies who have that as their primary mission. Talk about ReStore, because I think this is an interesting way for the public <laughs> to be a part of your efforts as well. It is, it is definitely on the side of what we do as a mission, but... Uh, it's also literally on the side too. <laughs> literally, it's next door. <laughs> but the ReStore is a, is a retail establishment. It's an, basically an ongoing fundraiser where we take uh, reclaimed items from someone who's getting a new television and they want to get rid of the old one or um, furniture, appliances, et cetera, donate them to the ReStore and then we resell them to the public. Anyone can come and shop at the ReStore. I would say that the, the markdown is probably 75% off wow. of what retail would be. So that, and those dollars come back into the organization and basically help with overhead and help us build more houses. And by design though, the thing about the ReStore is for the homeowners, it gives them a chance to find the furnishings. That so too. they literally yes. turn that house into a home yeah. all the way through with Habitat for Humanity of Greater Memphis. Definitely. Our homeowners and anyone on a budget can go to the ReStore and find, you know, slightly used merchandise to take into their homes and sort of just refurbish, paint, clean up a little bit. Definitely. So tell viewers where they can find more information about all the great work you're doing. We can be found at uh, memphishabitat.com or memphisrestore.com. So there you go. Make sure and definitely check out the Restore. Get involved. Do a build. Absolutely amazing. Greatly appreciate everything you're doing in the community. Thank you.
we talk about making a difference in education, teachers are on the front lines. I'm here with an organization that's working to recruit, train, and support effective teachers, Memphis Teacher Residency. I call it MTR. Here with Candace Obadina, she's the camp director for Memphis Teacher Residency. And give us a little bit of the history for MTR. Yes, in 2010, in partnership with Union University, we graduated our first cohort of teachers. And since then, we've been training and supporting teachers. Roughly under a little under 200 teachers are now presently teaching in the city of Memphis. So 200 teachers almost have gone through your programs, mm -hmm. now in the classroom, effective teachers. Yes. Talk about where these teachers are, are coming from. Yes, so our teachers are from all over the U.S., various socioeconomic statuses and ethnicities. And they're coming from HBCUs, private Christian universities. And the fun thing is, some people have chosen to switch professions just because they believe in the mission, they believe in the work that we're doing. And why Memphis? Why are they choosing to come to Memphis? They're here in Memphis because they understand Memphis is the place to be if you want to be involved in education reform. And most of our teachers are here because they understand that it's our call as believers to express Christian love through education and quality education to those who need it. And I think that's to me the, the major point I want to make is that these teachers are coming from all around the U.S. They're coming to Memphis because they believe in what they're doing, but they also too, they want to make a difference in the lives of these children. Mm -hmm. um, so the neat thing is on your end is that they're coming here, they're going through formal training, they're getting mentorship and guidance, but they're also earning the masters in urban education. So it's a win-win-win for everybody, yeah. including the students obviously. Walk us through what that program looks like in more detail. Yes, so it's a four-year commitment. The first year is your residency year where you take master's coursework in classroom leadership, content-specific classes, as well as cultural foundations where you learn the history of Memphis and how to be culturally relevant in your classroom. And then you are partnered with a mentor teacher who's an excellent teacher in the city of Memphis. And during a year, you have a gradual release model where our residents take more ownership of the classroom and we also provide instructional coaching. And those coaches come in periodically, give feedback and help our residents grow. And then the coaching doesn't stop in the residency year for your entire commitment to the city of Memphis and MTR will provide coaching and support because we want you to be effective and change students lives. And that's the part I love is that by the time they get into the classroom, they are ready to rock and roll and make Absolutely. a difference. So carry that forward to your baby, which is the camp. Yeah. Yes, MTR Camp is a summer internship. We invite college students to come here and teach lessons to students in the city of Memphis. And we do that because we've learned that students in the communities that we serve, there's something called summer learning regression. And so we believe that all students have the capacity to learn at the same level, it's just in the summer months, a gap happens. And so we structured a camp that is engaging, high energy, fun for kids, and also informs um, college students of what a career path in education could look like, particularly in Memphis. So it's their chance to come in as a college student and learn, okay, this is what it means to be a teacher, these are the support networks and all the training that goes into it in the mentorship as well. But also too, for those that might not even be thinking necessarily or might not have the degree in education, but it gives them a chance, kind of like the career changer that you were talking about, that says, hey, I wanna make a difference. It gives them a first chance to see what it's like to be a teacher as well. Yeah. Win, win, win for everybody again. Everybody. So when you look at where you're headed, I mean, obviously you've got the summer camp and you're, you're you know, thriving in that area. You've got the training program. What's the end goal when you look at Memphis Teacher Residency and where you're headed with all of this good work? What's that end goal look like? We believe in Christian love expressed through equal education. And so our work is finished when every classroom has a child that sits at a desk. Every desk is filled with students who are receiving quality, the best education possible in the city of Memphis. And you hear all the time with teachers under-resourced where they're having to use their own money to buy supplies and engage the students. So I've got to believe that one easy way to help is obviously for the business community to help and partner with the teachers. But what are some other things that we as the public can do to help your efforts? Yes, so there are several initiatives. The first that I'll talk to you about is MTR Reads, which is an after-school program at Sherwood Elementary. And it's a great opportunity for individuals who want to be hands-on with students and really 
watch students grow in their literacy, they can volunteer with that. We also have the MTR Give, which is similar to Donors Choose, where our teachers can put up pro projects and sponsors and donors and funders have the opportunity to give towards the classroom need that the teacher nice. um, identifies. And then lastly, we have conversations called MTR Talks. And it's a great way for community members and parents to learn about what is going on in urban education broad and nationwide as well as specific in the city of Memphis. Recently we had a conversation about the different school districts and just helping teachers and families understand the variety of things that are going on in this reform movement in education here in Memphis. What makes you the most proud? Obviously you see it front lines with the summer camp especially, mm -hmm. but you're interacting with all these teachers. Yeah. What puts a smile on your face? Give us maybe one success story or something that you said, this is what's going right. Yes, yeah, so someone that I love to talk about is Rose Logan. Rose came to Memphis to work as an intern with MTR Camp and she was wondering, searching, what should I do in my career? I like children, but I haven't had experience. And so during that camp um, year, she really interact with students and learn that this is what she was passionate about. This is what God made her to do. And so she decided to run with that and for a year, she did the Downline Emerging Leaders Program, and so MTR definitely supports and encourages great community initiatives that are going on in this city. And then she applied to our program, was accepted, and now she's a teacher at Cornerstone Prep, which is where she served at um, MTR Camp. And so she's working with students that she met in the summer years ago, and we are excited. We know that she's going to be a phenomenal teacher in the future. She just has a natural um, just charisma and a drive and we've just been able to groom a lot of what is God has already given her through our residency program. Love it. And so last piece is the easy one is give viewers an idea of just how to connect. Where can they learn more about Memphis Teacher Residency? Yes, viewers, you can connect through memphistr.org. We're also on social media through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So there you go. Make sure and check out all the great work being done by Memphis Teacher Residency and get involved as well. So thanks for coming on the show, Candace. Thank you. With the theme of supplies, we're here with a local family-owned company that uses all of its supplies, its resources to make a difference with local nonprofits. I'm here with the president and CEO of Yuletide Office Solutions, Chris Miller. You have a personal storyline associated with the formation of Yuletide Office Solutions. Give us some history. Uh, yes, sir. 41 years worth, actually. So, uh, uh, basically, we opened our company in 1972. That's what my dad, uh, uh, the dates that he started. Uh, and and to be honest with you, in 1974, he said I could either go sack groceries or come to Yuletide and sell some office supplies. So, uh, actually, it's paid out pretty good. I'm still there. So, nice, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and it's now third generation in terms of, so obviously started by your father, but you're now president and CEO, and you've got family now involved as well, correct? Uh, yes, I have three nephews, uh, Ben, Todd, and Justin. There so, you go. So, uh, two of them are in sales, and one is in operations. Nice and formed around Christmas. And so when you talk about Yuletide, obviously the name, but Christmas throughout the year is a big part of it in terms of driving customer service. But uh, you used to do little things with candy canes and gift oh, wrapping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, my dad was a marketing genius. He, his thought was, what brings a smile to people's face? And, uh, and it came up with Christmas and Yuletide. So we, at the very beginning, for many years, we wrapped all of our office supplies in Christmas paper and stuck a candy cane on there. Nice. Which was, uh, it was pretty exciting. And like in July, when you bring a Christmas present in and set it on the receptionist's desk, and she's like, okay, you're either early or you're late. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah. So it's worked out very well. And, and a big part of this, so obviously Yuletide Office Solutions, all sorts of office supplies and products, and now it's into cleaning, and uh, you cover a very wide spectrum. Spectrum. But when you look at the power being able to compete with the big box, is you actually have agreements with other family-owned companies um, in your industry, and so you come together, the power of teamwork, to be able to compete, and so you can get the same price point or even lower in some ways because you're using and you're leveraging the power of the dollar with all these other family businesses around the nation. Talk about just leveraging purchasing power. Yeah, these are family businesses, as you said, that are throughout the, the United States, and, and what we do, it's a, it's a buying group. 
that we all, uh, all our purchase orders go directly to them and then go directly to the manufacturers. So you take all those family businesses across the, the United States and you pull all those dollars and it makes us competitive with the big box companies as far as what we can buy it for. Uh, so we buy directly from the manufacturers. It was definitely a different uh, from buying what was called wholesalers. When you buy direct, uh, you're buying it for the same prices that the big box companies are. So wow. it works out fantastic. But I think it's just it's neat to know from a public perspective that there are ways for local family-owned businesses to compete by teaming up nationally so that you do get competitive pricing. So I, I like that aspect of it. The other thing is, is being local family-owned is you're connected to the community. This is where you live. This is where you work. This is where you play. This is where you uh, get involved with nonprofits. But a, a large amount of your dollars then are reinvested in the city. Oh, most definitely. We're... We have, uh, that's just something we have always been a part of is the nonprofits. Uh, we've been very blessed that our business has done well. That's the way I was raised. You, uh, you give back to those who give to you. So the Mid-South is definitely, it's, it's uh, taken care of our company, been involved with Yuletide, has purchased from Yuletide, and so we're very involved in the nonprofit community. Talk about the, the number that you look to hit, but you always exceed. Is it 9%? It's nine percent that we give back. If you look across the board, basically most businesses it's two to three percent, but we give nine percent if not more. So um, we're very thankful that we can do that. And the other aspect is it goes beyond the financial contribution. So obviously that's a big piece of it, but you also too, and the thing that I love is that you look around at all of your resources, all of your resources. So even your trucks and you say, you know what, we can use these delivery trucks for good. And so we can do things like teaming up and doing corporate food drives and we can bring a huge box to your office. So all you have to do is collect the goods right there. We'll come pick it up and we'll take all that to Mid-South Food Bank. Same thing with toy drives. And so yes. talk about just your aspect of looking at everything company wide and figuring out, okay, strategically, how can we make the most good of everything we have, including people? Well, you know, I, I've always been involved in the nonprofits. I've been on the boards, and, and as time went on, I, I, I certainly noticed that we have trucks that we can use. We have employees that I want to be involved. Um, I, I strongly believe those that play together stay together. Um, so I put that as part of my review process where my employees at the end of the year, I ask them to be involved in at least two nonprofits that Yuletide backs every year. And that goes into the review process. Um, I knew I had trucks. Uh, so when Meriton called me about their midnight bike ride um, and said, Chris, what do you think about maybe, you know, using your, tr you know, your trucks for our, our bikes and to, to pick up the bikes that, that breakdown or the people who can't make the 13 mile ride, is this something that you would be, you know, be involved in? And I said, oh, most definitely. So uh, anyway, it's from midnight till three in the morning. So that's what I- A little I, out of your normal business hours. Oh yeah, yeah. Our drivers definitely, that's something they, you know, I've done it for many a years. Uh, thank goodness I've got drivers that volunteer to do that now. And I just got to go up there and do my PR. So it's nice. all, it all works good. And in the Porter Leith, uh, we were asked to be involved in that. Uh, they came to us, they had 4,500 kids that were not going to have Christmas. And um, anyway, and so what we looked at was the fact of let's invite our customers to get involved in this as well. Uh, just like the food bank, the same thing. And we sent out a, a blanket email to all of our customers and asked them, would they help us raise, you know, all these toys to, to make these kids happy, to give them a Christmas? And we had over 70 locations uh, hit us back and ask for a box that they would personally put out an email to their employees to help fill those boxes up. So we made 4,500 kids a, a wonderful, happy Christmas. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And that's a perfect example, though, of just asking. And many times as a company, you have one of the most valuable gifts. You have all of your clients, and you can simply ask them and do exactly what you did. Because you know, many times with these, it's one thing, you might have some that raise their hand, but if you ask, mm -hmm. they'll get involved. And, and that's the beauty of everything that you do is that you not only get engaged from a company perspective, you get all of your clients and your friends and everybody else involved as well. And, and the city's greater for it. Yes. Talk about just the aspect of advice. What would you tell other business leaders, individuals, entrepreneurs in terms of what it means for you to be able to involve your whole team, your family in giving back and making a difference? Uh, it, it means a lot, you know, to have my employees involved, you know, uh, in all the nonprofits. And uh, uh, it's something that they look forward to, too. You know, what I would do, and if I was in anyone that's 
has a company, assign somebody, a couple of nonprofits that you want them to be involved in, and, and get all the information, and I, I would say make that part of the review process when you talk to your employees, that this is something that you want them to do, is to give back. So, you know, it makes them feel good about themselves, uh, and if every company out there would, would do this, I'm telling you now, Memphis would be a much better place. Memphis in the Mid-South. So the last one is always the easy one. Where can viewers find more information about Yuletide Office Solutions? Uh, just go to our website, which is www.yuletideop.com. Well, I greatly appreciate everything you do in the community and for coming on the show. All right, thank you. As we saw in this month's episode, supply can be a verb, like with Memphis Teacher Residency's efforts to supply highly trained and effective teachers who provide access to quality education in high-need neighborhoods. It can also be a noun, like a supply of resources which Yuletide Office Solutions offers with its financial contributions, delivery trucks that pick up donations during food drives from Mid-South Food Bank, and holiday toys for the children at Port Relief, as well as their team who are so actively engaged in volunteerism. The best part is that, just like with Habitat for Humanity of Greater Memphis, which is building up a supply of volunteers, resources, and furnishings to supply homes to families here in the Mid-South, all of these organizations are creating change and supplying hope in our city. So thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to interact with your stories of others leading by example, visit thesparktv.org. We look forward to seeing you next month, and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Next month on The Spark, our theme will be employment. We'll learn more about an organization that's been working for more than 100 years to give people with barriers to employment the job skills training, resources, and support for a positive work experience. We'll explore a nonprofit serving the under-resourced through outreach programs, daily classes and meals, educational training, and spiritual counseling that lead to hope and jobs. And we'll discuss how a company known for matching businesses with top talent is also helping to fulfill the needs in our community. Make sure to join us in May for the next episode of The Spark here on WKNO.